And now, for the final award of the evening, the best young Flemaker of the year. And the nominees are... The Sea Monster, Davy Bouton, producer. Ah! <laughs> Titanic 2. Sheila and Billy Jones, producers. The ship is sinking. We've hit an iceberg. But the ship can't sink. It will never sink. It's insinkable. It's called the Titanic. There's fish all over the place now coming in because we're really sinking a lot now. We can't sink. We sunk. I love you. I love you. And finally, Fat Her. Brendan, Melissa, and Jason Perdukis. You had an affair? Look, I... I and now I, she's trying to kill us? How could you? I'm sorry. Who is she? Just some woman. Is it because I'm fat? No. In fact, she's fat, too. Well, where is she now? I don't know. But we're safe here, in the country. She'll never find us. Found you. Ah! She found us. You said she would never find us. But that's not her. And the award goes to... How do you get these open? <laughs> oh, here it is, Fat Her! Brendan Johnson and Khaleesi Perdukis. Congratulations. Uh, would you like to say a few words? Keep it tight. I'd, I'd, I'd like, like to like thank really the like people who this made it. I know I'm Okay, well, thank you very you. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Much. I don't thank know what else. Thank you very much. So thank, thank you. you. Good Stop. night! Stop it. Sit down. Thank you. All right, uh, so I'll keep it for the first day. Melissa uh, keeps mm -hmm. it for the second day, and Jason will keep it for the third day, and we'll keep doing it like that for the rest of our lives. Okay. What if um, one of us gets hit by a car and then it gets mangled? And then you miss your day. Mm. Excuse me. Hi. Uh, Hi, I'm Dixie Smithley from Channel One News, and I wanted to congratulate you kids on your award. Oh. I'd love to do a piece on you three kids. You mean, um, beat us up? No, no, of course not. No, Jason, no. She means she wants to do a story on us, right? Yeah, right. I think it's fascinating what you kids are doing, and I think it'll make a great story. We'll do some interviews, follow you around with the camera, you know, see what it's like to be young, award-winning filmmakers. What do you say? Could you repeat that? There you are. Oh, hey, mwah, whoa, Mom. Brendan, I am so proud of you. Congratulations. Are you his mother? His girlfriend. She's kidding. We broke up. I'm I'm his mom, Paula Small. I'm Dixie Smithley from Channel One News. Nice to meet you. Oh, hey, I am so proud of you kids, too. Congratulations. Brendan, your mom's all over me. Congratulations. Thank you, Mrs. Small. You have really bad breath. <laughs> well, I think this is going to be a fun interview. That wasn't the interview. <laughs> You see, Mr. McGurk, the problem is you scored extremely low on certain parts of your evaluation. No. And the part we're most concerned <clears throat> with today is the one dealing with your anger. In fact, I understand that you ripped up that <clears throat> section of the evaluation and threw it into the reviewer's face. In accordance with school policy, it will be necessary for you to attend anger management therapy. If you refuse, you'll be terminated. Am I clear? Mm-hmm. It's all up to you, Mr. McGurk. Are you willing to attend these anger management well, sessions? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? I don't know. Oh, damn! Coffee, anybody? Because I've I'm, I'm, I'm got a fresh pot brewing. Just a show of hands if you would like coffee. Okay, four cups of coffee. Cream, just a show of hands. No, put your hand down and then show it again. Dad. Okay, okay, everybody ready now? <sighs> Let's just chat, okay? Let me ask you, Melissa, you started performing when you were... Uh, how old? How old were you? Well, I... Yeah, I'm out of coffee. Do you, st do you still want the cream? Dad, forget the coffee. Come in here. Just a little thing of sugar? Dad, just come in here. I'm sorry. Uh, am I in there? Oh, sorry about the coffee, guys. How about a highball? My father's a little nervous. How about a speedball? I understand. We'll work around it. Not a problem. Dad, please, just sit. Okay. All right. Okay. You know, Just I'd like a, to have a lawyer present when we do this. You already signed the release. No, I mean, I'd like to get a present for my lawyer. A lawyer present. <laughs> oh, okay. The cover-up runs deep. How deep? Um, really deep. Deep, deep. So you're saying that if I wrote this story, I could bring down the most powerful man in the free world? You mean Bill Gibson? No, I mean the President of the United States of America. Oh, it doesn't run that deep. That would be really deep. Mm. I want to thank you for all your help on this. 
And the American people will thank you, too. I hope not all at once. That would be really loud. <laughs> That's a joke. Oh. I guess with everything going on in my life, my mistress trying to kill me and everything, my, my sense of humor is gone. Um, one more thing before you go. I wasn't leaving. Oh. Yeah. That's awkward. It is weird. Okay. Um, here, I want you to have this. Ha! Ah, now that's funny. Oh, uh, it's not a joke. I'll cherish it. I sort of want you to throw it out. It reminds me of my father. Oh, does he look like a zebra? Uh, no. Oh. Someone's coming. Were you followed? Yes, were you? Yes. Um... Oops. I sense that your character is tormented by his unfaithfulness to his wife. Oh. But in this particular clip, he seems to be a little bit more aloof oh. with regard to his infidelity. Is that accurate? Sure. That's... yeah. Well, what is the significance of the zebra? Huh. Does it represent redemption for your character? Are the stripes a metaphor for the cell that keeps him a prisoner of his own dark secrets? Wow. <laughs> Boy, you said it. But actually, no, no. The, the, the thing about the zebra is that it, uh, it looks like a horse. Okay, horse. Yeah, and um, if you put peanut butter on a horse's gums, they look like they're talking. And that's why there's peanut butter on its face. Yeah. But what you said is really good, too. So, Jason, I understand you really enjoy the sandbox. Aren't we supposed to talk about the movie? Well, I'm focusing on the sandbox right now. I want to see where you, where you get your ideas, where, where your whole genesis is. What? The beginning. Your beginning. Right. I like um, the, my sandbox because I like sitting in sand. And sometimes I pretend I'm sitting in the desert. Really? The desert? Let's move on. Okay. So, I have to talk to you about the movie Fat Her. You're playing a lot of different characters in this movie. Yeah, I played um, 11 characters, eight of them women, including one who's um, five months pregnant, uh, another who is seven months pregnant, and one who can't conceive but who's pregnant. My, my, my. That is a tremendous range for someone so young. Yes, well, stuffing a pillow under my shirt helps. Yeah. Sometimes cats come in the sandbox and poop. And the guy took my spot. I mean, I clearly was going to park there, and I was pretty upset. So I took a deep breath, closed my eyes, and thought, how am I going to handle this? Kick his ass. Wait, John, hold on to your thoughts. Uno momento, please. I'm just saying, you kick his ass or you hit his Let's car. Let's find out what Larry did, and we will get back to your comment. Continue, Larry. Well... I took a couple more deep breaths, and I realized it was stupid to get upset over a parking space. So I drove around a little more, and I found another spot, a better one. A so. better parking spot. To the victor go the spoils. And how did you feel, Larry? Tell us. Well, I, I felt really... Uh, Let us all listen to Larry and learn, for Larry will teach. Well, I, I really felt... Um, Think about what you're saying, Larry. Well, you know, I felt really, uh... Larry, you know, just I, relax, let it flow. Yeah, for me... Don't hold back, man. Tell us everything. Yeah. Well, I felt, uh, for me, it was a... If we a, listen, Larry... Why don't you shut up and let me tell them? Right. Go ahead. Sorry. I felt good, you know? It was nice to, f to finally... Uh, for me... He felt was... good, good is good. Stop interrupting me! <laughs> I'm going out for some deep breaths. Okay. John. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that was funny what happened with Larry. Huh? He's messed up. It was a bit upsetting. Larry's a mess. John, let's talk about you. Tell me about yourself. Um, I'm not feeling too good about this. Everyone's uncomfortable at first, John? Yeah, yeah. And then what happens? What are your problems, my friend? Where? I mean, I'm not really an angry person, you know? I just, I don't, I hate people, and I hate my job. Good, acceptance. And I hate my mother. I don't know, work with that. I'll be back with my decision. Would you ever cheat on your husband? No. Mm. You know, by studying these fossilized footprints, I believe that dinosaurs would often split up and leave each other. Would you like to go out to dinner some night? Sometimes one of the parent dinosaurs would leave and never see the baby dinosaur again. That's sad. For the baby. But some animals eat their young, so it's not that bad. Oops. Can we just stop the film here for a second? Sure. 
I must say, Brendan, though it's a tad difficult to follow at times, this film is extremely creative. I can see why you kids won the award. Ah, uh, shucks. So where do you get all of this creativity? I would, I'd have to say from my mom, you know. She's a, she's a very creative person. She teaches creative writing. She writes, you know, herself. She does. She's a, and I've read some of her work, and uh, uh, not very good. But, you know, she's very creative, and I'd say, like, if I get it from anybody, it's got to be from her. So what about your dad? I bet he's pretty creative, too, huh? Uh, Brendan? Brendan, are you okay? Brendan! I'm fine. I was just, I was just thinking. Oh, you're such a smelly little girl. You made a big messy mess for Mommy to clean up, didn't you, huh? Yes, you did. You made a little mess. Mom? You did. Oh, dear Lord. Is there another dead animal on the floorboards? No, that's your little baby sister made a little messy mess. Mommy's going to block her nose just a little while. Yeah, I'm going to stand outside the room just a little bit. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, Mom? Yeah? What was the name of that guy? Uh, you know, that guy that... That used to live, uh, that used to live here, uh, father. That's right. What are you talking about? Uh, nothing. Just questions. Dixie, father, interview. You know, Use just... sentences, please. Well, Dixie's been asking me a lot of personal questions, like how creative is, you know, my father, and, and I don't really know how to answer those questions. <clears throat> well, I, I was going to call him to tell him about the award, so uh, I'll, just, I'll just call and tell him to, to give you a call sometime. Okay, that's good. Just, he'll call. You know, whatever, whatever is fine. Thank you. Don't mention it. I will not. Okay. Oh, there's my little Josie. Little girl's all nice and clean, isn't she? Oh, Clean. Mom? Can you never talk like that again, please? Sorry. It reminds me of my father. It reminds me of my father. It reminds me of my father. Mm, I guess he's not home. Do you still want to go to the movies? No, it kind of wouldn't be the same without Brendan. I mean, who's going to sit in the middle? Yeah, well, I'm going to the movies. The thing is, Brendan, a lot of guys become fathers, and they don't know the first thing about being a father. No, you don't. Janine, do not stand there. You have to run. Soccer is a game of running. For a game of standing around, as you seem to think it is, we wouldn't need shoes. We would just wear socks or go barefoot. Yeah, Coach McGurk, are you all right? I'm fine, Brendan. Mm. Thank you for asking. Look, Brendan, I know you blame your father for a lot of things, and maybe it is all his fault. There you have it. Thanks. Anyway, don't make the same mistakes I made, or my father, or your father. Like what? Well, like this morning I poured orange juice in my cereal. I wasn't thinking. I just grabbed it, poured it. I was half asleep. Then I realized I love it. Like it's a great mix. Then I realized it's the corporations and the advertisers who prevent us from doing stuff like this. They program us to think one way. Milk, cereal. Right. Then you realize orange juice cereal is fine. It all goes in the same place. You know the old saying. Yeah, I know that saying. Point is, Brendan, give your father a chance. Right. Janine! Would you prefer I get in my car and drive you up and down the field? Huh? Or do you want me to get you a rickshaw? How about that? Now I'm dri driving you up and down the field in a rickshaw. Welcome to China, Janine. Oh, crap. Okay, this is our current work in progress. It's a comedy about a beautiful young girl, the daughter mm -hmm. of a self-serve gas station attendant, right? Oh, mm -hmm. Who, through a series of bizarre mishaps, ends up being mistaken for bizarre uh, mishaps, ends up being mistaken for a princess, <laughs> and is kidnapped by a bunch of inept, over-the-hill mobsters who are trying to get a, enough money together so they can buy a struggling minor league baseball team and retire. Wow. Action! I want my daddy! Cut. Beautiful. That's a wrap. Seventeen. Eighteen. Oh, come on. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Oh, God. Lady, do you believe this guy? Twenty-two. It says no more than twelve, but this fish head's got twenty-two. All right, breathe. Relax. Now breathe again. 
Oh, now what? Now come on, pal. It says 12 items or less. 12 or less. Oh, good. You can read. Yeah, apparently you can't. Hey, look, pal. Why don't you shut your pipe before my foot clogs it? Oh, is that a threat or a poem? No, oh, you know what? Not worth it. It's not worth it. Forget it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not worth it. No, 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 no. You know what? Control. I'm going to stay in control. That's what I'm going to do. Stay what? in control, John. What did you say to me? When? Did... Just oh. now. What did you call me? You know what? I'm not talking to you. Oh! Now you think you're better than me, is that it? Look, pal, I used to be just like you, sort of. A little different. Please. All right, so I know what you're going through, but I'm trying to deal with my impulse control. Booyah! So I guess, uh, I guess that's when he hit me. When I woke up, he was running my head over the checkout thing, trying to get a price on me. John, let me first say from the bottom of my heart as a caring human being, I am sorry for your humiliation and pain, but I praise you for your determination and your lack of retaliation. You know, Dr. Frizzell, I gotta be honest with you right now. You know, brutally honest. You suck at this. All you do is make people angry. Like, every time I listen to your droning voice, I get angry. And then you tell me that's my problem. But I'll tell you, I think it's you. I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say, I'm mad. Because I'm just a mad person. I'm an angry person. But that's not it. It's you. Tell me. Come on, man. No, no, no. You're not gonna suck me in with that. Do you like chicken wings? Yeah, I, I do like chicken wings. Yeah, why? They're delicious. What do you think, man? Oh, I thought you were gonna give me an analogy. No, there's no chicken wing analogy. Oh. You're a weird one. So, you've made over 400 films together. That's amazing. Thanks. Some are very, very short films with no endings. Still impressive. What is the longest film you've ever made? Well, the longest film was 21 and a half hours long. Mm. But we, um, but we left the camera running accidentally. Oh. So there's a pretty big chunk in the middle where nothing happens. Oh, okay. Answer the phone! I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? Okay, Melissa, bring it in. Good job, Melissa. Thanks, Coach. Sorry the ball went off my head into our own goal. Yeah, yeah, I know. I saw that. It's all right. You know, just, just a game. These things happen. Good try, Jeremy. Nice try. It's okay. Way to move up the field, Janine. Very good. Nice shot, Jeremy. It almost... Hey! Coach Hack! What do you teach these kids? How to lose? Because that's all you do. I, uh, I think that, that guy's talking to you, Coach McGurr. Let him talk, Brendan. Let him talk. All right, very good. Keep it going. Don't quit. Yeah, I wish you quit, you bum. Don't you have to know a little bit about soccer in order to coach it? Yes, and he does know a little bit. Melissa, stay out of this. Oh, what, are you going to have the kids fight your battles for you, you wussy? <laughs> I've been watching you all year. You're a bum. A B-E-M bum. I could coach circles around you. Of course, it has to be pretty big circles to get around your fat ass. Uh, coach McGurk, you all right? I'm fine, Brendan. I'm fine. Hey, can't you hear me, lot ass? Or are your eardrums filled with fat, too? Clean them out. Hey, aren't you going to yell at him or, or hit him? No, Brendan, I'm not going to do any of those things, all right? Actually, I feel sorry for that guy. Really? Yeah, because he obviously had some deeply troubling issues. Probably had a bad childhood, just like you guys. Way to go, Janine. Way to move down the field. But you're going the wrong way, but that's totally okay. Hey, what are you gonna, what are you gonna eat between halves, fat? <laughs> How about a fat sandwich on fat bread, you fathead? Brenda, do I look fat to you? McGurk. Oh, Miss Plum, you look great. Sorry we lost, but winning isn't everything. Well, they played a good game. Well, the kids try. That's what I, you know, insist. I, I was talking about the other team. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> but you showed me something today, McGurk. Yeah. You controlled your anger. I was impressed. I've decided you can stay on as soccer coach. Wow, wow. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Miss Plum. Thank you uh, very much. You've shown marked improvement in your anger. You're extremely kind. You're probably one of the kindest people I know. Y keep up the good work, McGurk. Yeah. I'll be watching you. That's illegal. <laughs> Your short's the 6 o'clock news. Hey, Dixie said it was the 6 o'clock news. But it's almost 6.25. It'll be on. Hey, this dip is unbelievable, and I'm not talking about me either. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Eric. It, do you want a beer? Uh, no, one is my limit. Y you didn't have one yet. Okay, well, bring it on. I mean, let the good times roll. <laughs> Dad. Oh, boy. This is so exciting. I, I, it's I, odd. It's odd. Oh, no, it isn't. Yes, it is. And now here's Dixie Smithley with Entertainment Insight.
Thanks, Charlie. Have you ever wondered where the next Steven Spielberg, Jodie Foster, or Ed Wood would come from? Well, I have. In fact, I had a chance to sit down and chat with three future Hollywood bigwigs who were the recent recipients of this year's Young Filmmakers Award. At ages 8, 8, and 7, Brendan, Melissa, and Jason are very young. But let me tell you, if these kids are the future of movies, then hold on to your popcorn, because we're in for a crazy ride. Charlie? <laughs> Thanks, Disky. And speaking of crazy rides, here's Stormy Weatherhead with the latest on that deadly tornado. Stormy? That's it? All those interviews? All that footage they shot? Ugh, I was so young, man. Hey, look on the bright side. It was very, very positive. She called you all three big wigs, huh? Three big wigs? My three big wigs? Mm. Oh, Brendan, that's probably your father. He was gonna watch the news. He said he'd call. What? What? My dad? Uh, me and fa father? It's up to you, Brendan. I'll get it. Dad. <clears throat> Hello?